From Tokyo to Timbuktu, Cape Town to Quito, people are on the move, leaving the countryside for the big cities. A trend that's affecting even the South Pacific. Click on a search engine on the World Wide Web. North of New Zealand, you'll find the island of Fiji, just a small dot on a world map. A thousand kilometers north of Fiji, and there's an even smaller dot, Tuvalu. Its nine coral reefs cover 25 square kilometers. This tiny island, with one of the highest population densities in the world, found itself sitting on a virtual gold mine. And now the internet is catapulting Tuvalu into the 21st century. There's been little development. Jobs are scarce, opportunities few and far between, and there's very little money. But in 1999, all this looked as if it was about to change. My name is Jacopo. I live on Tuvalu, one of the smallest countries in the world. Our nearest neighbor is Fiji. Still two and a half hours flying from here. So few people in the world know our country and even fewer come here. That's why the arrival of the plane is always an exciting moment in the week. Everyone wants to know who is arriving. Because not everyone can come, I put it on a tape and broadcast it every Monday in the two hours of television that we can afford. I'm working for the Tuvalu Media Corporation and uh, I'm actually working on the local TV program. So that's, that's what we need the, uh, this for the program tonight. So uh, people want to see this? Oh. Oh yes, they love to see this. Um, we just started this early this year, but uh, people seeing themselves on the tallies uh, is it's new to them, so they, they love it now. So most of them, uh, before they, they just want to come to the issue with, with the plane is and see the people coming up. But with this program, some of them are really not bothered now, just stay home and see, oh, we'll see on tonight's program. What we see now is a special guest who were invited to the 22nd anniversary of Tuvalu independence, and including his uh, minister from uh, foreign affairs from the Republic of China. And uh, the, the two guys from Dot TV. What's that? Dot TV is, uh, we had Dot TV is, um, it's a company that, um, that giving, they, they're giving us money, a lot of money. That's what we had, that's what I had. Why are they giving you money? Because they, because uh, they sort of um, selling the, the t TV, TV is the initial for Tuvalu and something like that. I'm not, I don't really know what's about dot TV, but um, it's, I just heard that they give me money, so I don't know about TV. Basically what dot TV is, it's a top level domain name, so just like dot com or like in the Netherlands you guys have dot NL or in Germany dot DE, Tuvalu ended up with dot TV. You have to understand that Tuvalu, by geography, is probably the fourth smallest country in the world. They have, you know, 10,500 people that actually live on the island, so they probably wouldn't have a ton of need themselves. Even if every citizen in Tuvalu had their own domain name, there would still be the opportunity for .tv to, to sell literally hundreds of thousands, not millions of domain names out there ending in .tv. Um, and that's really our core business, is that we sell these top-level domain names uh, to anyone who wants to buy it all over the world. What did you hear about the island? I mean, what's your impression? What, what's your idea? Yeah, I mean, I think in general it's been an incredibly positive relationship with, uh, with Tuvalu. I mean, the people are no, very... What, what do you expect to see when you go to Tuvalu? Um, I, I mean, from what I hear, you know, I, I've heard that it's an absolutely beautiful location. It's very tropical climate, you know, very warm. 
uh, lots of sand and beaches and uh, palm trees. Uh, looks very, very, very nice and seemed like be a be a fun place to go. Uh, to be honest, I don't I don't know a ton about the details. But life in Tuvalu isn't that complex. A former British colony, it now has the smallest GDP of any independent state. It has eight kilometers of roads, one airport, and no mineral resources. This is a very good, good life to stay here. Very good life. No, no problem, eh? no trouble, no. Uh, when you go anywhere, no trouble, no. If you want to go and you can, you want to eat some fish, you can, you can find some fish every time. If you don't want to eat, you can always smoke. This is a pentanus leaves. And what do you do with it? We use for smoke. Smoke? Yeah. Cigarettes? Yeah. Can you show me a cigarette made out of this? Very much pussy. Yeah. This is used for that. But I am no smoke. Okay. Jacopo is keen they should know that the dot TV money could help their business opportunities. Uh, part of this uh, company, so the that's where they, we get the money from. So, like, um, you can ask the your council, island council, for any development you want to start here, or like build the buildings, you know, and the machine and install a small disc so that you can watch TV from here. That's that constant low that's been sitting off the coast. Oh, I love those things. The internet is not time sensitive, right? It's, uh, you know, as long as you film it one time and you can store that broadcast on a server somewhere and you have the capability to stream it through your website you can come at noon time you can come at 2 a.m. in the morning you can come at 4 in the afternoon whatever is most convenient for you anyone who who wants to be able to do it should be able to afford to do it and i think that's one of the things that that dot tv is evolving towards and we would love to be able to provide it's basically a turnkey solution for anybody who wants to build this website of tomorrow you know the next generation of online experiences I think the great thing that you're seeing by looking at all these different sites is that this really is happening on a global basis. It's not just happening in the United States. Um, it's happening in the Netherlands, in Germany, it's happening in the UK, it's happening in Korea, it's happening in uh, Japan and Hong Kong. But if the internet revolution hasn't quite reached Tuvalu, .TV is sure that Tuvalu will participate. Yeah, the agreement that we have with Tuvalu is actually $50 million over the course of 10 years. Uh, the contract is in perpetuity, so after the 10 years they stop receiving cash payments, but they still maintain their equity stake in the company. So they actually have a double-digit equity stake in our company, and they have a seat on our board. Um, so I think overall it's a very, very positive deal for them. And to know that, that the monetary gain that this company can have is actually affecting people's lives and actually doing a very good thing for the citizens and the country of Tuvalu, which you know I think by any measure is, is a fairly poor country, but to be able to do good things uh, for them is pretty exciting for us and all the employees here. The capital of Tuvalu is Fongafali. The city is Tuvalu's gateway to the outside world, home to its one airport. 
It's become a city island with electricity, television, and a diet more varied than coconuts and fish. It's home to the Tuvaluan government. It's where 70% of Tuvalu citizens who want to be part of the 21st century now live. But there's a downside to this new urbanization. 400 people per square kilometer means a squeeze on space and facilities. Tuvalu may have inherited the dot TV millions, but it is still to develop a viable economy. On Tuvalu, we have three kinds of people. Poor people, less poor people, and the government. Almost everyone who has a job works for the government. Tuvalu has very few products to sell. There are coconuts, but everyone has coconuts in the Pacific. There is fish, but everyone has fish in the Pacific. And we cannot catch much because our boats are very small. But the government has sold the rights to fish large quantities to other countries. And they help us in return. On Tuvalu, we only have 130 telephones, but we have a satellite capacity for many more numbers. That surplus we sold to some businessmen from abroad, but we didn't like very much what they did with it. What are you wearing? High boots and even leather skirts now and then. I have light skin that tans easily, large breasts and long legs. And that's just very bad, you know, we, we are really uh, disappointed with uh, di uh, dishonest mob of people like that. And we could sue them because we were misled by them. Kaloa Talaki is a special advisor to the Prime Minister. When the deal to sell the internet domain .tv was done, he became one of the six directors of .tv. I'm beginning to uh, learn uh, yeah. about uh, internet. Yeah, because I saw your assistant was advising you how to use the computer. That, uh, that's right. Uh, I was uh, trying to send an email to uh, uh, to the dot TV, answering a message from them, and uh, you know, I did not know the I know uh, the right the right way to do, uh, to do it. Um, you know, he, he really functions a, a lot like a lot of the other board members, you know, to make sure that he's aware of all the decisions that the company makes, that, you know, he has a say, he can voice his opinion, um, he can, you know, help guide the direction of the company, um, and, just, and just plays a, a pivotal role and also really maintains the, the liaison so that there's a constant flow of information between us and the government of Tuvalu so that they're always very well informed and that they understand all the goings-ons of the company. Why do you think media companies are so interested in .tv? Why do they want to have these domains? Um, well, I really don't know, but I assume uh, it's um, it's a new thing. But it's uh, the most meaningful two-figure, you know, uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, And uh, it's there, you can see the logo on the door. Uh, it's a dot TV. Uh, the new front, uh, internet frontier. Probably that, uh, I yeah. That's a, a layman's uh, answer, yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs>
The sale of the domain name .tv has raised the profile of computers on Tuvalu. Schools are promoting the new language, if not the new technology. Microsoft Excel is an electronic spreadsheet that runs on Windows computers. What is an electronic spreadsheet? An electronic spreadsheet uses a computer to perform numeric calculation rapidly and accurately. Title bar. The title bar displays the program name and the file name and also contains a control menu box with a close button and resize six button. Formula bar. The formula bar allows you to enter or edit data in the worksheet. In Tuvalu, if you know how to type or type in the computer or manual, uh, people will offer you a job. Yeah, but who is offering jobs? Uh, the government. You know, the first girl to start this school, she's working in the parliament. The other one there in the... <coughs> Island Council and the other officers full of my students. I want to get the computer as soon as possible. Why? Because uh, it's, it's so handy. I mean, you know how to use a computer? Uh, yes, uh, a little bit with uh, typing things and save, and you know, this, that's, I think that's all I need. I was uh, sort of encouraged by some friends to get into this uh, system. And who are they? It's a it's, it's a two two couple from as a couple from, uh, from from the United States from LA, Julie Julie and Josh here, and they gave us some information on uh, what to buy. You can afford it? Uh, no, uh, that's why I had to save some money. I save a lot of money. But, um... Computer technology has arrived here at Tuvalu's customs office. But the question is, will computers really bring prosperity to Tuvalu? People will uh, need their computers on the, uh, on the island, and as their income, you know, uh, do a lot. We should uh, be able to, uh, you know, to buy those equipment, uh, which are so useful for life, eh? oh. because the stomach is, uh, you know, it's full with a, a plate like that, and it's limited to that quantity, eh? and uh, you can eat more than uh, one plate full of uh, food. Eh? One plate is you. Satisfy your uh, your belly, uh, but the checklist income you have, you will start to look around to buy a car, buy a boat, buy computers. You know, yeah. enjoy. <laughs> what happened? Maybe something wrong with the uh, powerhouse. Uh -huh. What do you think is wrong? Hmm? The lining. They're lining something short. <laughs> how, how often does this happen? Oh, twice a week or three times a week, or even more than, than that in the daytime. It's very uncomfortable with people like travelers. This uh, fuel generated one is too expensive. Cost of fuel goes up and up and up and up. Uh, but there are also other sources which might be uh, uh, good. Like what? Like uh, diesel, um, diesel and coconut oil. We have plenty of coconut. Uh. You need thousands of coconuts to do that. Sure. But do you have them? Uh, well, we have to uh, do, uh, do it. I think we have. Hey, don't, hey, don't. How was it? <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure the uh, white line's for the center of the runway are in a uh, straight line. All the black here. 
need to make sure the when they paint to keep the to put the boards down so we keep the line straight otherwise it wobbles doesn't look too good okay it's where where do you spend the money they don't have an enormous amount of money well they haven't until recently had an enormous amount of money so they have struggled for many years i think the situation is probably different now with the dot tv money and fishing fishing licenses money and such like um, so it stops being an underdeveloped country then Possibly, yes. Yes. Tuvalu has one hospital and two doctors for ten and a half thousand people. Five out of every hundred children die before the age of five, one of the highest infant mortality rates in the Pacific. Normally, like you know, when someone is in, in labour uh, in New Zealand, like you know, you are you are put in the delivery suite, and that's where you are, and that's where you are monitored. But here, like you know, you have to wait you now. In queues, like you know, you just get put on, like you know, like you know, just before uh, delivery. If they come at the same time in the, to the labor ward, then we, the, one, the other one, the, will, de will deliver on the delivery bed, and the other one will be delivered on the uh, the patient bed, like this this bed. Yeah. Beside, no. But you no, are sometimes the only... they, they, the other one will deliver outside. Well, and doctors and myself as well. We are not trained as a as a obstetrician and gynecologist, and it, which means like you know, we lack the, the, the experience as well. Uh, that's one of our acute 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 cases are mainly obstetrics and uh, and the and the gyneco uh, gynecological uh, uh, problems. Most of the patients they bring their own, uh, you know. Uh, like you no, know, like someone like a caregiver to just to keep the nurses at hand, and most of them like you no, know, uh, sleeps on the on the floor. And when it's really really busy as well, like you know when there is no beds and uh, and it's only how many two nurses that looks after the wards and including the very sick uh, patients. And uh, but at night uh, one nurse is looking after the whole uh, whole uh, uh, two wards, including the very sick uh, my patient in there. He's a cardiac you know, uh, patient, and normally this kind of patient should be in uh, intensive care, but we don't have any intensive care in uh, in, in, in Tuvalu. And, uh, but is there really no money? There's income from .TV. Uh, that's what they say, but I haven't seen any. I don't know who's got them. So far, uh, this this expenditure level are being. Uh, contained and maintained through, um, you know, very prudent management of our financial resource, and so so that our budget, our annual budget, uh, are estimated uh, at a level that is sustainable. I would like to think that they would actually want to be a developed country, and they would actually wish to spend the money to develop. But I know that if they do so, then the aid money that comes in at the moment will probably stop flowing. Because once this becomes a developed country, there's no need to pour aid into it. So there is a big argument for not pushing for development too hard, because that maintains your multi-million dollar aid funding. Before the DOT TV deal in 1999, Tuvalu's main source of income was international aid. But the windfall from the sale of Tuvalu's domain name could revolutionize life here forever. It's as if Tuvalu has won the lottery, but still doesn't know how to invest the proceeds to benefit all the islanders. And there are still questions about how safe incomes from internet businesses will be in the future. Obviously, the, this company is in the business of selling domain names, right? So, I mean, uh, you know, we have to believe in that fundamental business. But every business has threats, right? So, I mean, that's that's something that, you know, obviously, obviously we think about, you know, and, and things that you're being concerned about. Yeah, but but to you it means you move into something else. Keep yeah, but yeah, potentially. But to Tuvalu means that they lose the t entire budget. Uh, you know, I, I mean, really, part of the process here is right, like. You know, if Tavala really is expanding their their capital infrastructure, and that 
you know, they're building things that would expand their entire revenue base, right? So if they're going off and, and actually expanding their runway such that they can expand into tourism, you know, that really sort of diversifies their risk. Thank you.